the Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. Uh, I'd like to welcome you uh, to our uh, reflection on the New Testament in 90 days. Uh, as you know, we have uh, started a journey uh, in which uh, we are going to read the old New Testament in 90 days. So again, welcome to our uh, NT90, uh, New Testament in 90 days. Uh, today is already uh, uh, day uh, three of, uh, of our journey, and I hope uh, you are enjoying the journey. So uh, God willing, uh, time to time, I will uh, I try to intervene and uh, uh, be able to uh, share with you some key moments, uh, some uh, uh, key uh, uh, theological point or some area of focus that uh, I feel that uh, important to share. Uh, again, uh, we need to continue to uh, reach out to our brothers and sisters to create those small groups. Uh, the assignment was that uh, each one of you, you find two, three partners to create a small group of four people so that you can be able to discuss and share some of uh, the reading as the Lord is guiding you. Uh, this is a great journey in which really if uh, we uh, discipline ourselves and give ourselves permission, after 90 days, we will be able to finish and read the New Testament. What a blessing. Uh, to be able to read uh, the New Testament in 90 days. So I would like to invite you to start with me as uh, we give thanks to the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, I want to give you uh, thanks and I want to praise your name for uh, the grace you have given, given me and uh, my brothers and my sisters to be among the living. Uh, thank you for the privilege to be alive. Uh, this morning, I pray that as we are uh, reflecting on your word that you'll give us wisdom and understanding that the holy spirit will guide us as we are studying your word in jesus name amen all right again my brothers and my sisters uh welcome to this reflection uh on our journey new testament in 90 days uh today is day uh three of the journey and i hope by now uh you are enjoying the reading and uh like i said we are in the book of matthew and there is some, uh, 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 some uh, a key point that really uh, uh, caught my attention. First of all, the person who wrote the uh, book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, it looks like someone who really was in love uh, with the teaching of Jesus Christ. Uh, already you will discover that uh, he comes from a Jewish background. Uh, this is the person who really wanted to establish that continuation a continuity between the Old Testament and the New Testament. In fact, his building, the way he wrote the book uh, of Matthew, is an introduction to a new covenant. And uh, he's bringing uh, already in chapter 1, you see the genealogy of Jesus Christ, where he's establishing the gene genealogy of Jesus Christ. And uh, Matthew chapter 1 uh, talks to us about the ancestors of Jesus Christ, how Jesus was connected uh, to people like King David, uh, uh, to people like Solomon, and uh, and this is already where, uh, really, uh, for me, uh, chapter 1 on the genealogy of Jesus Christ, I noticed something of great significance, and I want you to uh, notice that. Uh, perhaps you read those names. They can be a little bit challenging to read those names. Uh, but in uh, Matthew chapter 1, you see, the genealogy of Jesus Christ includes uh, people with questionable characteristics. You know, uh, people that uh, uh, under normal circumstances you will not want to be associated with. For instance, you see in uh, the genealogy of Jesus Christ that there is a woman by the name of Rahab. And uh, we all know the story of Rahab. Rahab was uh, a prostitute, a woman who was... Uh, in the city uh, when um, uh, Joshua and, 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 and the spies, they went to visit the city of Jericho. And this was the woman who welcomed them. And uh, uh, this woman happened to be part of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Uh, just a moment of observation there. Uh, then you also see somebody like uh, 
Solomon, King Solomon, who happened to be a child who was born out of the wedlock. You know, uh, uh, Solomon was the son of Bathsheba, and Bathsheba, who was the wife of uh, Uriah, uh, that David uh, took by force, and David ended up killing Uriah uh, to uh, take Bathsheba as uh, his wife. And then you see himself, King David, uh, this man that we talk a lot about him, but when you reflect about the life of King David, you see David is a murderer. Someone is an adulteress. Someone who uh, abuses power. Uh, an evil person. But yet, these people are part of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. These people are part of... Uh, 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 the people that God, uh, uh, the Son of God is connected, is, uh, is associated with people of the same nature like us, sinners like us. So, so that's very significant when you are trying to understand the nature of God, that God is an inclusive God. God loves everybody. And uh, uh, again, uh, chapter 1 of uh, uh, the Gospel of Matthew really begins with that uh, uh, attestation uh, 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 to affirm the love of God, to affirm that inclusive nature of the love of God. Everyone is included. The love of God includes everybody. It includes everyone. So I want us to really be aware of that. that you cannot exclude anybody under the umbrella of the love of God. God loves everybody. So just when you study this, uh, 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 the genealogy of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 1, uh, that, that seems uh, not important, you know, in terms of name. But the moment you begin to go deep and, and see who are these people and, and the type of people, they were not just clean people. Jesus did not come from a clean background, you know. He just did not come from good people. He came... You know, in, in, in his life, he's connected with people of all these questionable character. But yet they are part of the story of God. God is concerned. God is intervening in the life of the world despite, in spite of our shortcoming, in spite of who we are, in spite of our natures as sinners. Yet God has a plan for us that God is including us in God's divine plans. So chapter 1, very very interesting. And then you also see how they talk about the birth of Jesus Christ. And um, uh, I always say to you the story of Jesus Christ, how Jesus Christ was born. Um, uh, the story of Jesus Christ is not always that story of um, uh, a nice story, a clean story. Uh, this is a story that is, uh, uh, it brings a lot of shame, a lot of drama. Uh, a young woman who became pregnant uh, with no husband. Uh, you see the attitude of Joseph, how uh, even in the midst of controversy, how Joseph uh, still is committed to do what is right and to protect Mary. And, you know, a Christian attitude there. Then you see also something that really caught my attention in, in chapter 2. In chapter 2, we see the emphasis of uh, how God is guiding God's people uh, through dreams many times. You see God intervening when Joseph wanted to get rid of uh, his engagement to Mary because uh, Joseph did not like the idea of uh, uh, getting married to Mary and uh, he wanted quietly to divorce Mary and say, okay, let's just call off the engagement. We see God intervening through dreams, that God is speaking to Joseph through dreams. That's the first occasion in chapter 2. Then you see another occasion is when God is speaking to Joseph about leaving, going to Egypt. God is providing uh, uh, a guidance and say, go out of this place because the king is about to kill the kids. The king is about to kill the children. And then we see also the Magi as they were looking the, uh, 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 where the place where uh, the king was born, they went to Herod. Uh, uh, Herod is, uh, is a kind of a, a liar, a hypocrite. He, he's lying and say, oh, go and search for this uh, uh, new king who was born and come and tell me where he is so I can go and worship him. You know how in his heart he was, uh, he had other motives. He wanted to go and kill the king. He saw a competition coming his way. 
But when the Magi discover where uh, the child, uh, uh, the baby born uh, Jesus was, uh, we see that God also speak to them through a dream and say, do not go back by the way of Herod, do go another way. I, I wanted to em uh, emphasize this uh, element of divine uh, guidance that God is guiding people in dreams. God is using dreams as a way to guide people. And I want us to really uh, uh, think about that, you know, our dreams, you know, sometimes God used dreams, you know, uh, to speak to us. Uh, somebody uh, defined the experience of dreams uh, like something that happened between the subconscious and the uh, the consciousness. You have a conscious, you know, and the subconscious. In between there, God sometimes will speak to us uh, through the process known as pre-ancient. Pre-ancient. Yeah, this is uh, what we call the intensity of feelings, you know. It, it can be just an idea that God put in your mind uh, or God speaks uh, through dreams. So I want to uh, validate that way. Uh, don't always neglect the dreams that you may have. Now, I'm also aware that some dreams can also come because of the multitude of uh, ideas and uh, uh, desires that we, we may have. And, you know, you may dream about something when, because you have been thinking about that things too much. But I, I, I don't want us to invalidate this uh, way that God used dreams as a way to communicate with us. All right? Now, you see uh, in chapter 3, uh, uh, you see uh, John the Baptist. In fact, that way uh, my sermon is for this coming Sunday. I'll be talking about repentance. But you see in chapter 3 uh, a rebuke uh, for the religious people and, and, and the call to true repentance. Uh, John the Baptist is rebuking the religious people. Uh, very important there because uh, religious people uh, sometimes uh, reduce the relationship with God on a level of dogma. Uh, you, you, throughout the New Testament here in the book of Matthew, you will see that uh, God is emphasizing one aspect, loving of uh, 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 justice and mercy. Uh, uh, Christianity is not just a movement, a dogmatic movement where we follow dogmas. Uh, yet, yet, yet God is concerned about if we will practice love, if we will practice mercy, and if we will practice justice. In chapter 4, uh, as you've noticed, uh, there is uh, uh, the temptation of Jesus Christ, and uh, uh, we see uh, the works of the enemy, the devil's activity. Satan is in the business of uh, uh, tempting us all the time, temptation. Uh, uh, we will always be tempted, and that's an area that we will address. Our, I'm, I'm thinking about... Uh, uh, creating an opportunity for us to learn. Temptation is always going to be there. When you fall into temptation, then it becomes a sin. This is why in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus is teaching us to pray and say, God, do not lead us into temptation. Give us the ability not to yield to temptation. We want to say no to temptation. Okay? That you see that uh, emphasis in uh, chapter uh, 4. In chapter 5, there is also another element uh, we see in chapter 5 and chapter 4, especially chapter 5, chapter 4, chapter 6, uh, and chapter 7 there, you see uh, Jesus' divine activity in terms of uh, providing healing. Jesus is healing the sick. Uh, you know, they, they, Jesus is praying for the sick and is uh, healing the sick. There is that dimension of healing that uh, 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 God is a healer. You know, God has a power to heal us from our disease. In fact, scripture is right, by his stripe we are healed. So I want to emphasize this aspect of healing uh, and see that part of uh, Jesus' ministry is also healing. Uh, that even in the midst of our challenge as we experience a, a disease, that we should not lose faith into trusting that God is our healer, that we can trust God to heal us, all right? Uh, 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 I, I know there are many questions, you know, sometimes we ask ourselves the question, why this person was not healed or why this person is still continuing suffering? There are questions that I may not have all the answers, but I will never doubt the fact that God is a healing God, all right? And we all have experienced that divine touch, you know, God is touch our body, you know, God is healed. I've experienced that divine healing in my life. All right. So the, there is this emphasis of the power of healing that God is a healing God. 
And I want to encourage you to always have that faith and confidence that God is a healing God. That God has the power to heal the world. In fact, right now, with the pandemic going on, how the church needs to pray for divine healing. That God heal. He's our healer. All right? God, our healer. And, 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 and Jesus gave us the spirit that was upon himself and say, go. And he gave us that mandate to go and heal. So, so I want to invite you to really uh, pray for divine healing and, and, and pray in the name of Jesus that God will heal those who are not feeling well. That God will use the hands of the doctors, the nurses, that uh, through the works uh, of uh, the medical scientists, uh, you know, the medication that we are taking, whatever it is that above everything, you know, healing comes from the Lord. And God is a healing God. So there is also another aspect as you read uh, the book of Matthew, you will discover an element of demon possession. You know, they talks about Jesus casting out demons. This is another aspect, another aspect that we as a church do not emphasize and don't talk a lot about demon possession. Can a Christian uh, be possessed with a demon? Uh, can a person be possessed with a demon? Uh, does the church has the power to cast out demons? Do we have as Christian people the power to cast out demons? And I think, yes, we have the power. Jesus has given us the power to cast out demons. So these things are real. It's not just, you know, uh, in terms of us scientifically or intellectualism, in terms of our intellect, we try to uh, move away from this idea of demon possession. We refer to people as, oh, they are bipolar or dipolar. They have double personality and all these type of things. Spiritually, there is an element of demons that the devil can distract people and, and possess people to do what they, 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 they cannot have control of themselves, you know. Uh, they, they're invaded by that uh, power that is beyond their power. Uh, so so with, with Jesus Christ, we have the power to cast out demons. In fact, one of the mission of Jesus Christ, he came to set us free, he came to deliver us uh, from the influence of uh, uh, the enemy. So there is in the world, in the spiritual world, there are people who... I possess demons are real. You know, they are not just a, a fixtures. There is not fiction when we talk about the influence of demons. Who, who are the demons? The demons are those groups of angels that were kicked out from heaven with Lucifer. You know, uh, 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 when you read the story in the book of Genesis, uh, Lucifer was the angel of light. And when he created that rebellion in heaven, there is a group of angels that joined the devil and they were kicked out from heaven. These are demons, uh, power of evils that are at work in the world. But thanks be to God because Jesus Christ gave us the victory. He overcame. And, uh, 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 he overcome. You, 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 you'll see uh, uh, the works of Jesus Christ as he's engaging into uh, 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 this spiritual warfare, casting out demons. So we have the power. Don't be afraid as you are reading uh, this text. Don't be afraid. You as a child of God, you have been given, you have been given, you have the power of God to cast out demons. So in the name of Jesus, you can cast out demons. In the name of Jesus, you have the power to do that. All right. So that's something that I wanted to emphasize in terms of uh, where we are. And uh, we, we see the power of God. Uh, the, there is a story, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the paralytics who was healed, uh, the story of faith, you know, how uh, Jesus was able to perform a miracle. Again, the book of uh, the Gospel of Matthew is very encouraging, telling us that God is able to do whatever God wants to do. Not, no power is above God. You, you know, I'm encouraged by this. So no matter where you are, know that God has the last word and our God is able to do exceedingly above what we can ask and imagine. I love that. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. That our God is able to do exceedingly above what we can ask and imagine. So we see these miracles of healing. Uh, uh, the, 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 
uh, there, there are people who, the blind people are able to recover their sight. Those who were not able to listen, they are able to listen. Those who were not able to speak, they are able to speak. Those who were not able to walk are able to walk through the power of God. So the same God, Scripture tells us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So our challenge here as God's people is to, to, to be able to believe the Word of God and, and, and to walk by faith in the Word of God. All right? So that, that, that is going to be our challenge. So you will see throughout the, uh, 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 the reading of the Gospel of Matthew, the emphasis is on uh, 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 mercy, on justice, on faith. Uh, uh, the writer here is uh, bringing us to that understanding, rejecting the traditional way of interpreting uh, uh, Scripture, uh, looking at Scripture from the perspective of Jesus Christ. You see Jesus Christ is saying, you have heard that you are to love your friend and hate your enemy. You have heard it was said to you, but me, I'm saying this to you, love your enemy. You see, Jesus is, 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 is bringing us another way, another perspective of reading scripture. You'll notice that as you pay attention uh, throughout your reading. And then you will also discover the foundation of uh, the gospel of Matthew. Uh, it is based on love, uh, love ethics. Uh, this double love, uh, double commandment of love, the whole book you'll discover, Jesus gave a resume of the law. Love God and love your neighbor. The whole law is uh, just on that principle, loving God and loving the neighbor. So you'll also discover that the New Testament, especially the Gospel of Matthew, is built on that principle of love. So I just wanted to... Uh, uh, I share uh, some uh, key uh, as we are journeying together in this uh, uh, New Testament in 90 days. I'm encouraging you. This is day three. Uh, be encouraged. Create time. Uh, reach out to your friend. Uh, discuss by phone. Create opportunity uh, through Facebook, uh, Zoom, or if you are going to meet at home, whatever you create an opportunity to have two, three people four people that you can discuss. And again, uh, do not forget to send us a message, uh, uh, email us or call uh, uh, the church office to let us know about your group already. I have families that have told me, we read uh, uh, the New Testament, we listen to the New Testament during our dinner time. There are families that just sit together, uh, four of them, they just listen uh, to the uh, uh, New Testament reading and then they discuss together. That, that's something that we encourage if you can do it with your wife or your husband. Create a moment where you can read together or your friend if you want to associate some friend and, 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 and uh, be really uh, uh, diligent in doing that and uh, uh, remember also the aspect of uh, uh, meditation that we've provided those guidelines in terms of uh, those important questions that you are to read, all right? Uh, don't just read quickly, but uh, uh, give yourself time to ask you uh, some uh, important question, you know? First of all, uh, always begin by asking God to give you uh, wisdom and understanding, uh, that uh, God will open your mind, uh, your perspective, and, and as you are, you are, you are reading, uh, uh, the, 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 the scriptures, uh, be able to have a notebook, you know, don't just read, you know, I, I've given myself permission. I, I have my pen where I just write the stuff in my, 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 my Bible to just uh, remember some key points. So have a notebook where you, 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 you write some note there and, uh, uh, things that, uh, you feel the Lord is speaking to you. Uh, be able to really emphasize on that and 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 uh, meditate on that. What what is this scripture about? Uh, you know, uh, what's the emphasis on this scripture? Is there something that the Lord is uh, uh, telling me? Is there something that God is asking me to do? Is this an ex example that I need to follow? Is there something that I need to avoid? Uh, you know, I've discovered something that. Uh, I feel like I need to share with you. Uh, uh, I think it is uh, uh, around chapter 3 and chapter 4 where uh, Scripture is telling us to even avoid calling each other uh, names. You know, uh, Jesus is teaching us 
uh, to not to call each other, each other's name, you know. And, uh, you know, we live in a time where it's easy for us to call each other's name. And, you know, I've, I've heard people referring to other people, oh, so-and-so is an idiot. Or so-and-so is, you know, people will fail, uh, put on their Facebook and... Uh, if you belong to a political party, you know, Republican will refer to the Democrat or they are idiot, and Democrat will refer to the Republican, they are idiot. You know, and it's like a culture where we just call each other's name and we don't see that as a problem. We as Christians shouldn't be part of that culture of calling people's name. You cannot just call your fellow human beings idiot. You know, the Bible tells us, in, <laughs> don't do that, you know. So, uh, uh, the emphasis on uh, on uh, uh, how to live, how to treat one another. The golden rules. Do for others as you will want them to do for you. You know, uh, uh, go an extra mile. Do not fight. If someone hits you on the left side, give them on the right side. You know, we don't believe in those things anymore. But these are the teachings of Jesus Christ. Very interesting uh, uh, journey. So uh, take your time. Have your notebook. Uh, write uh, uh, some key uh, important information as God is speaking to you. And as you are praying, you know, every day you write down and that gives you room how to share with your brothers and your sisters. Again, God willing, I will be intervening and uh, uh, my uh, hope and my prayer is for you to create many more groups. Now, if you cannot reach uh, a people you know, if you have friends, your neighbors and invite them and say, we are reading the New Testament in 90 days. I want you to be my partners. You know, I want you to be part of uh, our experience. You know, join us. Uh, every day we'll be discussing uh, or, you know, uh, once every week uh, we'll meet and discuss and just uh, share what you have read and pray together. Uh, let's be intentional in our journey. The more we know the word of God, we will be able to survive. Remember chapter 4, uh, uh, the gospel of Matthew, Jesus overcome the enemy with the word. He came with the word. If you are the son of God, change this stone into bread. He looked at him and said, no, a person does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Then he took him to the mountain and said, fall down because God will allow the angel to protect you. He said, no, no, you cannot test God. What a wisdom there. Jesus is saying to the devil, you cannot test God. It's not right to test God. It's like, it's like someone saying to you, I have faith, and then in the name of faith, I'm going to jump uh, out of the airplane without a parachute, you know? No, that does not work like that. You cannot test God, all right? You know, like now, you know, we are saying people should wear their mask because there is COVID out there. You cannot just say, I have faith. I don't need to wear my mask. So you see, with the word, Jesus was able to overcome the devil. And then he took Jesus and showed him all the glory of the world and said, if you bow down and you worship me, I will give you all these things. Jesus said to him, no, you can only adore, worship God alone. You cannot oh, bow down to other stuff. Idolatry is a sin. You know, with the word, the more we have the word of God, the more we understand the word of God, the more the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to walk into that. And you know what? We are pure by the word that we here we are pure by the word that we read faith comes by hearing uh and what we hear comes from the word of god faith comes by learning the word of god the more i learn about the word of god the more i trust god when i go i go through the valley of the shadow of death we all are going to experience in our lives moment where you experience the shadow of death all right i experienced that <laughs> <laughs> I experienced that moment. You know, when uh, I got my, uh, 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 I was not feeling well and uh, uh, it, it was challenging. You know, I, I, I thought it was just uh, 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 a little bit of, uh, 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 you, you, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I thought it was just uh, a little bit of sinus infection or allergy. But when I start losing control of my feet, I did not feel my feet. I did not feel my hands. I begin to lose my smell, my sense of taste and my smell. And, uh, you know, you begin to feel yourself that you are not yourself. And, you know, I had to rely on the word of God. And I said to the Lord, <laughs> Lord, give me the grace to live. You know, and uh, I thanks be to God. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I feel much better. I feel I'm doing very well, and uh, 
uh, I, I thank God. We all are going to go in our lives in those times where we will go through the valley of the shadow of death. We got to know the word of God, you know, and uh, I was encouraged by the word of God. And I knew whatever happened, if it's my time, I said to the Lord, I give you my spirit. You know, I was ready. Say, Lord, if you give me the privilege to live, I thank you. I will continue to live. But if uh, uh, this is my exit, I give you praise for what uh, you have accomplished through me while I'm still alive. You know, the word of God gave me the strength and the courage to go through uh, this time of pain and, 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 and challenge. So I know we need the word of God. So my brothers and my sisters, again, uh, I will encourage you to take this time very seriously and uh, uh, continue to pray and uh, uh, keep the journey, uh, keep on on the journey. I know there will be time where you feel tired and discouraged, but be intentional. Give yourself permission to read the New Testament in 90 days. So until we meet again, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and may the Lord be gracious unto you. Amen.